What happened in Spokane, and where do we go from here uh, with Auburn basketball? In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the book, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Fox. What's up? We're back. It's episode 28 of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Five, uh, and we're going to try to muster up some boog. We took a big one on the chin this weekend, this past weekend uh, in basketball, and I want to dedicate a whole show to basketball because the season's over. We're going to talk about uh, what happened this weekend, what this team might look like next year, and then where are we as a program? Where are we as a program? There's a lot of talk about you know, Auburn accepts mediocrity and this and that and the other. Let's really look at where we are as a program and and what we have to do to be successful moving forward. But before we do that, we have to, we absolutely have to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with active wealth management. I know Ford was bummed out this weekend, but look, he's still here to help you out, get you where you need to be, whether it be annuities, whether it be whatever your investing needs Uh, need to be he's going to put together a custom plan for you to get you where you need to be Uh, give him a shout just to cheer him up tell him more eagle i'm sure he'll shout it right back to you and you guys can kind of bug out and get and get back uh into the into the auburn spirit together i know we're a lot very downtrodden uh but ford stokes is there to help you turn turn it around uh especially from a financial standpoint so check him out active wealth management activewealth.com or annuity 360.net Uh, Well, look, I hate to continue to beat a dead horse, but I haven't had a chance to talk about it. (laughs) I haven't had a chance to talk about it, so I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, It was a tough, uh, a very tough uh, outing to watch uh, as an Auburn basketball fan with a lot of hype, a lot of feelings that this could be a team that can make a deep run. Uh, I, I was expecting no less than a Sweet 16. The draw obviously was going to be tough going through UConn, but I loved getting them in the Sweet 16, having a week to prepare. You get there, you get all the hype. You sort of you're over, you're over the seating, you're over the trip to uh, Spokane. I'm going to give it respect now since we went there and we crapped the bed. So Spokane, you go to Spokane, and three minutes in, you have a very very crucial moment that honestly cost you uh, big time the rest of the game, the rest of the game. And then you just really couldn't get – you could not muster a lot out of your you know, point guards and things like that. Uh, shot the ball pretty well uh, in general, uh, but you made key turnovers when you couldn't – you know, when you couldn't turn it over. And then down the stretch when you had to hit free throws, we hadn't really had to be in that moment. And unfortunately, you just weren't ready and you just didn't get it done, didn't get it done. There's two things to me that that are really crucial uh, as far as what happened, uh, and and I think there were weaknesses that sort of showed themselves throughout the year, and when you got on the big stage, they just really, really uh, raised their head, and and you you had a, um, a chance to be, kind of be exposed, I guess. So, the first one, look, I love having fun in a game. I love trash talking. I love everything about the personality. Uh, of this team, okay? You're talking, you know, Katie Johnson, Chad baker Mazzara, really the team in general. They were intense. They they guarded hard. They they played physical defense. But sometimes we, I feel like we let our emotions get the best of us. And it's not something that just happened in that game, That the, the one game against Yale. It kind of happened all year long, okay, to the tune of Auburn was – second overall in the conference in technical fouls. KD Johnson and Chad baker Mazar led the conference with six and five. I don't think anybody else in the conference had more technicals. There was a few guys that had four. There was a few guys that had three, but nobody had six. Nobody had five. And the, the crazy thing is that's with playing half a game, essentially. And at KD, sometimes even less than half a game. So – it, it's it's a really tough balance because on one hand, if you're Bruce, you gotta let them play, you gotta let them be who they are. 
You got to let them. That's their personality. That's what gets them fired up. I think more times than not, we sort of fed off of that emotion. I think from a team aspect, from the fan, it seems like, you know, maybe a, several of them happened at home too. I, I don't know that for a fact, but the crowd will get fired up uh, and things like that. But unfortunately, when you when you do that, there's a rap sheet. Okay, there is there is a there is a book out on you. Okay, this team is fiery. You got to watch them. They play physical. You you can't let the game get out of hand. You know, I and if you think that the, the that's not a part of a referee's job is to have some sort of knowledge about this team, uh, the teams that they're going to call the game for, then you just have your head in the sand. It's not not only is it not only is it their job, but it's a requirement. It's it's honestly it's more it's it's more safe for them to at least a little bit study the team and understand the personnel so that they know what to look out for. And then on top of that, I'm sure Bruce has done it. Hey, look, you got to watch so and so. He does he does this a lot. We watch this. He does this a lot on film. Okay, so watch the elbow. Watch the whatever, the hook, whatever. Watch this. We we've, we've seen it on tape. You got to watch this, and then vice versa. The other team is going to do the exact same thing. So when you have a season long rap sheet of you know getting technical fouls, having questionable calls, playing really aggressive the microscope is going to be on you. And I would not be surprised. I feel like I heard this somewhere, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. I'm, I would not be surprised if that was not part of a game plan is to get under the skin of, you know, a couple of players because they have the tense, the, the, uh, they have the tendency to react uh, in an aggressive, whether it be aggressive, whether it be in a, in a, in a manner that could, result in a flagrant one, in this case, a flagrant two, a common, a dumb foul, or, you know, guarding someone with your arms behind your back. Remember that one where the dude hit a three uh, when he had his arm and when Chad had his arms behind his back. Now, look, I love, I love Chad. He's my, he's my favorite player on the whole team, but still does not, does not change the fact that the microscope was on him and he let his emotions take over and three minutes into the game, He's gone. Okay. I've seen so many people talk about it should have been a flagrant one and in a in it versus a flagrant two. And in a vacuum, I 100 percent agree. If all things are equal, I might, I might agree with you. It seemed like there was some similar calls. Uh, there was a call in the Texas game that looked a lot more egregious than than Chad's uh than than Chad's foul. And I think it was a flagrant one, but still. You put yourself in that position. You put your your tournament life in in the referee's hands, and because of your past, you have forfeited your right for their benefit of the doubt. Because they're you know when they see that they're like, well, that's exactly what we checked on before the game. That's exactly what uh, we all talked about. That's exactly what was supposed to be you know on the radar, and he did it within three minutes. Who knows what could happen? And it was, I mean, you can't, it was pretty aggressive. I mean, it was sort of like an elbow, regardless of what happened to him, the prior possession, it was an elbow pretty high to the, you know, to the chest, neck, whatever. It was a pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive foul. So that was, that was the checkbox that they were looking for. And unfortunately it happened three minutes into the game. And, you know, again, it's hard to, you don't want to say it's an excuse. It's not because, you know, you, as a coach, you have to sort of have everybody have their have their eyes wide and be under understanding of what people are going to be looking for. But the big thing that it hurts is we play so many players, the rotations, when you sub, who you sub with are really, really important because it's not just like football where if a wide receiver goes out, you just put the next wide receiver in. Well, when Chad comes out, that changes the offensive production on the court. Okay. So now you have to come up with a whole new system of who goes in when and, and who plays where because it happens so early and you don't have any time to prepare prepare. If Chad would have been injured before the game and we knew it going in, you can put a plan together 
uh, to sort of disguise a deficiency that we're going to have at that position because that is what, uh, unfortunately, but from an offensive perspective, right after Chad, there's not much. Even though we're super deep, we got bodies, we got dudes that can give good minutes uh, at that particular position. It's pretty, it's incredibly top heavy as far as offensive production goes. So that was incredibly unfortunate. A, 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 a self shoot yourself in the foot moment on the big stage that you just can't let happen. You just can't let happen. And I think he knows that. And I hope it's a huge lesson learning for because this kid is such a good basketball player. He is unbelievable. The things that he can do with his body to finish at the rim, to get to the line, he is exactly what this team needs, especially moving forward. You got to have this guy. You got to have Chad. I don't, and I think, you know, we're going to talk about the roster moving forward, but you just got to have Chad. Chad's so important to this team. He was he was so important to this team. A six seven defender on the wing that can that can also run the run the floor, run a you know go coast to coast, can finish and get to the line. I mean, and shoot threes. Hugely important. When he goes out, now you're scrambling and you're like, what what is this rotate? What kind of ro- what can we put together? You move Denver over to three a little bit, which he hasn't done a ton this year. Uh, it's just it was a it was just a big big mess and it was a mess right off the bat three minutes into the game, and then the second thing is unfortunately look, I love Aiden, I love this potential coming in, I love Trey. Okay, they're both pretty solid. They can be at times pretty solid, in my opinion, backup point guards. Okay, they 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 are able to you know not necessarily turn it over. Even in this game, they only turned it over, I think, once each. Aiden didn't have any assists. Trey had four, okay? If you combine that, you'll take a two-to-one assist to turnover ratio every every single day. But as far as a point guard, late in a shot clock, you know, your play calls, you work, they don't work out. Somebody that can just take over and get the ball to the hole and finish or get to the line Neither one of these guys excel uh, at that. Excel at that. Um, Aiden, bless his heart, he can get to the he can get to the hole, but he can't finish. He can't finish. He was zero for five, I think, for the night. The only other player that didn't score was Chad because he only played three minutes. So you had Aiden and Chad, and then Trey has been good at times. But another thing is. It's hard for him to penetrate. It's hard for him to penetrate. And you can look at the free throws attempted per game and get an idea of how uh, much they are, I I guess, they struggle when both of them basically only shoot about one free throw per game, whereas Jared Harper shot three to four a game. Even Wendell. Wendell shot nearly six free throws a game because – and he made four to five of them because late in the shot clock, he couldn't shoot threes. But he could he could late in the shot clock he could penetrate get to the line finish or get fouled I mean that was just kind of what what he did and I feel like when when you're when you're late in a shot clock you got to be able to have that and it doesn't seem like uh, at least yet there could be some development they could get a, a, and, you know get better and better and better uh, if they're still here. Uh, but right now, that's just not their skill set. So you're really leaning on other players that aren't primary ball handlers to be able to, you know, fa- you know, facilitate, drive, finish. Uh, and when you when you have a point guard that can do that, uh, it just really makes this offense work. And so you get into the game against Yale, and Yale's just like, look, all we got to do is extend our extend these guards out, you know, and guard them pretty hard, and it's going to shut down the whole offense because they can't. Right now, it's hard for them to. Essentially, you know, for a lack of better words, just dribble around someone, dribble past someone. You know, the, the speed, the quickness to be able to, you know, to to slash and get in there. These guys don't really have it yet right now. So, you know, that perspective and the Chad thing, it was a recipe for disaster. And then, you know, just not being in the situation of having to hit free throws late. God, I, I think we missed – five out of six down the stretch that we had to have. I know uh, Denver missed the front end of a one-and-one. One. Trey missed two in a row. Maybe it was maybe it was not five out of six. Maybe it could have been. Uh, regardless, we didn't hit our free throws down the stretch. Yale did hit their free throws down the stretch. 
And then, uh, you know, you're on the big stage. You're, you got a little bit of diversity and, you know, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. So it was tough to watch. I know everybody was, I know everybody was, was as sick as I was. Um, and, uh, it was, it was just, it was no fun. You had a lot of expectations and it just sort of fizzled, fizzled really quick. And it doesn't help that your big rival still in the tournament. And I think that's, a, I, that, I think honestly, that's probably more of the frustration, uh, than any, than anything. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the season's over now it's, what does this roster look like uh, next year? So the portal is really starting to heat up as far as people entering the portal. There's going to be a ton of guards from, from your point guards to your shooting guards, two guards, your wings. There's going to be a lot of good guards that are going to be out there. So what do you do? What do you do? In my opinion, you have to upgrade at the point guard position. You have to get somebody that uh, you feel confident that can, you know, get inside and finish, whether that be someone that's a little taller, whether that just be somebody that's a, a senior that, that's got the experience from a lower lower conference or something like that. Or maybe you find somebody that's from, you know, I, I don't know, uh, a freshman or a sophomore who's showing a lot of promise uh, at a smaller conference and wants to step up. Like, regardless – Point guard is going to be a position where I think you have to you have to upgrade. You have to get a guy. Trey is he's gotten better each year. He's gotten better each year. But there's some, in my opinion, I think he's a great guard, great backup point guard, and I, and I he's very vital, you know, to be still be on this team. And I think there's a very good chance, you know, he comes back. I would say it's almost, you know, it's it's up there as close to a hundred as it can be. Bruce really loves him. Everybody loves Trey, uh, and and he gives very good minutes when he comes in. But you got to have a guy. You got to have a guy. And whether that leads to, you know, does Aiden maybe you know test seeking something else, or does is is he okay with continuing to develop? Because physically he's not quite there, and honestly, athletically he's got some work to do uh, as well. And and some of that can just come from strength training and things like that. So, and then I think his shot is there. He he had a little bit of the yips this year. If that comes back, that just makes him that much better. So point guard, you got to get better. Does Trey's probably a hundred percent coming back? Aiden, you know, we'll just have to wait and see there. Your two guard, you got Denver. Katie's out. Uh, Katie's go more than likely not going to be back. Basically, uh, from a lot of different reports. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. But you're bringing in Tahad Pettiford, one of the most electric freshmen in the class that can play point guard or two guard. So, you know, maybe you don't have to necessarily do anything like that. If Denver comes back like we expect, Denver got better and better as he got more confident with the competition. He's an unbelievable shooter. He can get to the basket. He's got to work on clutch free throws. I think free throws is probably his biggest weakness. Uh, you work on free throws. But from the, the three ball, he's a huge threat. And then late in the shot clock, he can be that slasher, and he got better and better finishing uh, as the year went on. So that that's that's something that that position may not be as as huge of an issue as you know as huge as as an issue possibly moving forward. So at the you know shooting guard, I'm sorry, the small forward, the three position, the wing, whatever you want to call it. You really, you really feel confident Chad's going to come back. You feel good about Chad. You get a, get a little bit of the just the mental aspect of the game settled down, and somehow you can marry. You got to marry that intensity, that attitude, that swagger, but you got to rein it in just a little bit. If you can do that, if Chad can figure out, if we can figure out how to get Chad to the point where he can still be aggressive still have that personality on the court, but rein it in just a little bit. Rein it in so that, that you're not on everybody's radar, every referee crew, you're not on every referee's chain email. Hey, watch out for this guy. You know, you got to just not, you got to not be that guy. You got to not be that guy. You got to kind of hide, hide and get, get some camouflage, some, some kind of camouflage. If you can marry that intensity with, 
being able to sort of be a little bit more reined in on the court. He is going to be a special basketball player. He already is a special basketball player, but he limits himself because he lets his emotions get the best of him. I, I believe it's again, I think there's a lot of people that would probably agree with that. But if if that can be married, he is going to be unreal next year. He, having a chance to be in a school in a system for two years, uh, if if he if he can come back, which I feel pretty confident he will, and and they get that piece figured out, he is going to be uh, a star. I mean, you're talking a possible All SEC type level player uh, at the wing position, which you desperately need. You know, that's your. You know, that's your. Um, Isaac Okoro type player. That's your. That's all those guys that you look at in our past that that were such great players. You're Malik Dunbar. You're, you're those type guys that that can you know pop out, hit the three, can finish. Uh, the, the, he is he is every bit of that, and then play good defense. He, he is every bit as good as those those type players. Uh, you just got to get the mental aspect figured out. So what's behind him? You know, Chris Moore technically could come back. Uh, a year, I think he's got he's got at least one more year of eligibility. Do you you bring him back for some some you know bench minutes things like that? That's but you're limited a little bit offensively there. You bring back a lot of character. You bring back a lot of you know team you know team leadership, but you really really sacrifice uh, on the offensive end. So you may look to try to fill that void somewhere, whether, but whether it be the portal, you know. Regardless, I think that's going to be a position that you look that 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 one hundred percent back up to Chad. I think that's something that you got to you got to figure out uh, at the four uh, at the four position. You obviously you lose Jalen, uh, which is you know tough. It's tough. You got you're bringing in Jakai Howard, and you got that that's a electric uh, electric. Uh, you know he could play a little bit of three or four. Uh, you got you got him coming in who is a you know, six, 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 seven, really bouncy. He's like a sort of a maybe a Devin Cambridge ish, but a, a, a lot more palatable shot <laughs> uh, from mechanics uh, standpoint. Uh, a really good three point shooter. He sh- shooter. He shot over thirty percent, like essentially his whole high school career, and uh, and uh, this this summer. This I'm not this summer. This past AA, AAU series. This OT whatever it is, this special uh, social media-ish type uh, AAU circuit that that they're on, he he shot incredibly from three. So that's a big plus. You possibly bring a guy that can, you know, he can bounce, he can jump, he's got all that explosion, and he can shoot threes. Uh, that'd be massive, absolutely massive. You got Chaney Johnson. Look, Chaney got better as the year went on. He played really poorly uh, against Yale, but again, it was a huge jump for him. I think he is going – he has the ability to uh, be every bit as good as Jalen, be every bit as good as as some of these, you know, power forward type players that we've had that can still pop out and hit a three but be physical and score inside. Uh, I thought he got hosed in the Yale game. I thought he got hit right in the face. I don't necessarily think it was a fl- uh, on purpose. So I don't know if it was – I think it was a basketball play that was kind of freakish. He got hit right in the face, uh, and I don't know if that maybe shook him up or something a little bit, but he he struggled, but he got, again, he got better as the year went on. So, you know, do you look at bringing somebody in there? I, I don't know. I think you may be – you may just if, – if you can get the key back, which I'll talk about next, if you can get the key back, that may be something that's not as insanely necessary. The most important guy that you can bring back is, is obviously Janai Broom, who's got another year. Look, I know – he went deep in the NBA uh, evaluation process last year, and he performed well at a couple of the different, like, draft combine events. Um, and I think he would even tell you, Janai Broom is, an, is one of the most electric basketball players, college basketball players, that, that we've seen in a long time. He, he, will be, he will be remembered as one of the best Auburn basketball players of all time. Okay, so don't get me wrong there at all. But I think even he would tell you there are some physical limitations to his game. Athletically, uh, being able to – he's athletically, first of all, from just from a measurable measurable standpoint, 6'10 centers in the NBA 
that's kind of rare. You, you, they're, they're a little bit bigger. So he's a little bit smaller, you know, for a true center in the NBA. And then does he have the athletic ability to play, you know, like a power forward position where he has to guard some freaky athletic guys? He's great at the rim. He's great at the rim. But what about if you're extending him out to the three line and he's got to extend out to the three line and then take one of the most supreme athletes uh, on the planet uh, and, and guard him from the three line as he's driving to the basket? I think that's somewhere he he could possibly get better. Uh, but he's probably going to struggle throughout his, you know, pro career in the NBA. That's going to be something he's really going to have to, really going to have to work on. So he's not getting a lot of first round projections. It's a lot of second round stuff. And with the sort of the dis dissolve, uh, the the G League being dissolved, it really takes the. This could honestly work in our favor. It really takes the incentive away from really gambling on that second round because you're not guaranteed a roster spot. So what kind of, you know, what kind of money can you make uh, in, in that situation versus what you could make at Auburn? Uh, he's, he's going to be just a supremely marketable person. I mean, he, everybody knows who Janai Broom is. So you feel like you're going to be able to get some, possibly some national brand sponsorships. Uh, you got a really big opportunity uh, to really take advantage of this last year of being essentially a celebrity in college foot, college basketball. So I think there is at least a fair amount of confidence you can get him back. And I think you do whatever you can, you know, to get him back. Because if you get him back, you feel even better about this roster. You feel supremely confident that you can at least repeat what you did in conference play. You can challenge for the conference title uh SEC tournament and then honestly I know I know we just lost in the first round but you know you can put together a similar team that I still think this team you know could have made a pretty deep run had the, the freakishly thing the freakish thing with Chad not happened and, and again I don't want to that, again that's not I'm not making an excuse the saying it's okay because that happened that is a reason that, that is 100% a reason that happened that can't happen again so if you can sort of replicate that and go, I think you got a chance to make some noise in the SEC tournament. And then Dylan Cardwell, there's been talk about, hey, you know, he does have another year, but he's also a guy, he's he's a very, very smart guy. He's very driven. Does he want to go ahead and get his career started? Uh, does he want to take a chance at, you know, possibly uh, working overseas as far as basketball goes and things like things of that nature? Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. I think you'd like for him to come back. You'd love to have that one-two punch. Uh, you do have a Darren Scott, who was your JUCO guy that you brought in last year that did not play a lot of minutes but can play sort of a bouncy five in a backup role if you do land a Janai Broom. But if you don't land Broom, uh, things get a little bit dicey, but you at least know you're willing to go you, – if, if you were willing to get him back, you at least know you're willing to go compete to go find the best – you know, portal uh, big man out there. So, you know, regardless, you can kind of take that and, and feel a little bit better uh, about that scenario if, if Broom were to decide. It's a little bit less certain, but you at least know that you've kind of put yourself in a position uh, that if you were able to get Broom, you should be able to go compete uh, for one of the better um, big man transfers out there. So the roster, I think, is uh, – you got some chances to upgrade, and I don't think it necessarily has to be a huge overhaul. I really don't. I really think if you can just if you can just get that guy at point guard, if you can just find that guy at point guard, surrounded by a lot of the the shooters that that we have on this team, and a lot of guys that can that can score the basketball. Uh, if you just have that guy that has the ability to, to drive, finish, get to the line, get to the line late in the game to seal one off, uh, if you can find that guy, I think it really, really changes this team dramat dramatically, completely change it, changes this team. And then combined with bringing back a few of the pieces that I feel like still as a team, it was a great team to be able to make a run incredibly efficient on both sides of the ball. I just don't think you have to change a ton if you can just upgrade a little bit at point guard, and then uh, honestly, if you can if you can reel the big fish broom back in, uh, you're going to be you're going to be feeling pretty good going into next season. 
before we talk about before we talk about uh, where we are as a program, uh, as, as far as a basketball program, we got to give a shout out to plainscoffee.com. Use coupon code button and get 10% off every single order from now until the end of this website, <laughs> to the end of this company, to the end of time, maybe, because it's never going to go away. Uh, sign up today. I'm not sign up today. Log on today. Get you a little subscription going. Get you a little, you know, repetitive order going. So you don't have to go to the, you know, the Walmarts, the Publix, the, the Sam's Club, all that stuff and get that old canned coffee. Get you some freshly ground coffee that sh- that is is ground the day, days before it ships, hours before it ships sometimes. So it comes smelling great, ready to go. Uh, plainscoffee.com. Use coupon code button for 10% off. Show them a little bit of love. All right, there was a lot of uh, hullabaloo uh, to be made uh, after this game uh, about, you know, apparently there's this, you know, I I haven't seen them yet, but apparently there's just this swath of of people that are just okay with losing. And and we're going to be mad at them and and yell at essentially no one because nobody is happy with losing in the first round. Okay, so nobody's happy with, with Auburn not being able to get past the weekend of the, I think the five trips that you've been to the tournament, you've only got out of the past, you've only got out of the first weekend uh, once. That's that's not great in, in a vacuum. That's obviously not what you want to see. Uh, but there's also some context to that. There's also some context to that. And, and, and another thing is, you know, as much as we want to be, as much as we want to say that we're a basketball school, we're really not. And what do I mean by that? Basketball schools have basketball fans. And Auburn has fans that love all Auburn teams. But we're not necessarily basketball folks in general. We don't have really the history. We don't really understand uh, from, from, a, from a whole fan base standpoint. We don't really understand what it means to be a great basketball program. And Bruce has done a pretty good job of teaching uh, along the way. He's created an unbelievable atmosphere and and it's something that we're all incredibly proud of. But by and large, we are not a true basketball fan base because in and, and I and I'm lumping myself into this, okay? Because there is a fine like there's so many aspects to to how to grade a, a college basketball season as far as like what's successful and what's not that, it, that it's you know it's really hard for Auburn fans that that aren't familiar aren't used to being successful in basketball to understand essentially where to put the weight where to put the emphasis how, how like it's it's it really easy to say oh you got to win national championships okay that's if that were the case if that were the case when you search, insert name coach on their Wikipedia page or whatever, it's going to list their tournament championships, their regular season championships, their sweet 16 appearances, their elite eight appearances, their final four appearances, and their national championships. It's going to list all those. Okay. So if you just say it's either national championship or bus, like, okay, that, that sent like you're cool. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. But a lot of times, you know, even basketball fans understand, true basketball f- fans understand that with this crazy tournament we have, those expectations are not always realistic. That's not a realistic expectation. And it, uh, for, for any school, really, to say a national championship or bust, uh, we got to start looking elsewhere. Now, where does that come from, especially from Auburn fans? You don't hear that anywhere else, okay? You don't hear that. If, if John Calipari could just get out of the first weekend – make it to a couple more elite eights, make it to a final four. The reason he is where he is is because he can't get out of the first weekend. Okay. At Kentucky, who has the storied history of this, he doesn't, he's only won one national championship. Okay. But if he could get out of the first weekend, this wouldn't be such an issue. This wouldn't be such an issue. So I guess where I'm, what I'm trying to say is this is my opinion on what I, what I've seen as far as from an Auburn fan perspective. I'm not saying Auburn fans are dumb. I'm not saying Auburn fans are bad. What I'm saying is we, and I'm lumping myself into this, 
we view everything from a football fan lens. Okay. We view basketball success from a football fan lens. You know, we view, we view uh, baseball success apparently uh, from a football fan uh, lens and our lens the last 15 years has been watching our biggest rival win national championship after national championship seemingly every other year with the mindset, hey, if it's not a cha national championship, it's a bust. The greatest run in the history of sports. So now, because by and large, Auburn has a little bit of a – Auburn fans, we do have – a little bit of an inferiority complex, or you want to call it little brother syndrome, whatever you want to call it, we do compare ourselves. We do think that we should be like Alabama. So what we're view that's the standard, what, what we have established that that is the goal. It's either national championship or bust. Look, that's what Alabama's doing in football. And now, because we don't watch a lot of basketball, or we haven't in the past, now we're sort of assigning that to to basketball as well and that's just not a realistic case for basketball not just auburn but for anyone the goal every year should be to try to put together a team to make a run for a national championship but i mean do we say this season's a, fa a complete failure i mean when you have an sec tournament title and it's only been done like three or four times and two times have been under bruce we don't understand, and and, it, and and I struggle with it. How to feel holy about this about this team in this season? It was it was a um, unbelievable run. Had some freakish things that happened in the first round, uh, and you know we, you know it's sort of a kind of becoming a little bit of a trend. You got three years in a row not being a, <clears throat> excuse me, three years in a row not being able to get out of the first round. I think where we are as a program is okay. We've we had that 3 years kickstart where we had to build the program. I don't think anybody blames anybody Bruce for, for anything in the first 3 years. The 4th year you get to the uh you you get to the tournament. The 5th year you get to the final 4. The 6th year you probably have an even better team than you had the year prior that's peaking at the right time and you get shut down with COVID. The next year you have the probation issues and then you kick right back up getting to the tournament. You win the SEC regular season. You struggle uh, in the second round of the tournament. In my opinion, you get out coached a little bit uh, from some guys that kind of, from a guy that exploited some of your weaknesses. Next year, you sort of go down, back a little bit as far as regular season success. You get to the tournament, you have a big win as an eight or uh, I'm sorry, as a nine seed, and you go up against a one seed and you play them pretty tight. You play them pretty tight, as, as I guess, as you could possibly expect as a, as a, as a nine seed had a, a big lead at halftime, and then you just kind of wilted down the stretch. Some of your weaknesses exposed themselves. And then this year, I feel like you just – you had all the expectations, and you go uh, – you go in and you kind of lay an egg. So where are we as a program? There's There's been a lot of – it feels like we're starting to try to create this narrative that there's like some huge – some like huge, I guess, issue, some huge – like we got to – you know – we're underachieving and blah, blah, blah. Or if, if we're not expecting this, we're, we're, we're accepting, we're just accepting mediocrity. We're just happy to be there. And I don't know that those people exist. I think people that aren't uh, set that, that aren't all, let's go set the whole world on fire are just being realistic about where Auburn was as a program and where we are as a program right now. And I think where we are right now is we are a team that is, up to the point where we're going to be tur a tournament team every single year. And that sounds like not a huge accomplishment, but for Auburn basketball, it's absolutely massive. It's absolutely massive. When you're talking about uh, some of the biggest accomplishments all hap for Auburn basketball all happening in the last five, six years, we are at the point where we are a tournament team every single year. And I never thought I'd ever see that at Auburn. You can you can essentially say the last five years in a row we've made the tournament, and I don't know that there has ever been a maybe ever uh, a five year stretch in a row where an Auburn team that could make the tournament made the tournament. Twenty twenty, obviously you have COVID, 
the whole thing was canceled. Auburn would have been a tournament team then. Then you had the probation year. But, yeah, one uh, five years essentially in a row, you've been a tournament team. Now you've gotten there, okay? Now we're at that part, that point where – we are a, a tournament team. We're a tournament team. We're going to be a threat to be a six or better seed every single year. We're going to be a threat to, to win the conference almost every single year, which we are. We're one game out from winning the conference this year. Then you go and you win the conference tournament, okay? I don't know about you guys, but that's what I've always dreamed of as, as far as, like, would we ever see that? Now, what's the next step? It's just like football. You know, you you go six and six, six and six, seven and five, eight and four, and then you bring a coach in. And all of a sudden, if it's not twelve and zero every single year, like there's a lot of games in between there. We got to get to. We got to get to nine and three. We got to get to ten and two. Okay, so now we're a tournament team. So what's the next step? And I think it's totally fair. I think it's totally fair for Auburn fans at this point in time to say, if we don't get to the Sweet Sixteen or better. We got issues. Something, something, so, something's got to change. And I think you're going to see it. You're going to see some big shakeups in this roster this year. You're probably going to see some guys that portal that you wouldn't expect. You're going to see some dudes come in from the portal uh, to upgrade your talent of guys that have been there. Like that's what you're going to see. No longer can you go multiple stretches of, I think going out in the first round or the first weekend in general. I think the expectation right now, we've increased, Bruce has increased the expectations at Auburn to be a second weekend basketball team at worst. And once you get there, especially if, you know, you're talking apparel and things like that, some of the natural hurdles that have kept Auburn back for, for a long time, uh, once you start getting those fixed as well and 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 you're already at a a tournament team and you can advance you got to push it now to being a at least a second weekend team um i don't think that we're that far away from that and i'll tell you why i know we're not that far away from that because look at the programs that have tried to hire bruce seemingly every single year this year it was indiana Louisville's tried forever. These are basketball schools. These are schools where the primary sport there is basketball. It's basketball fans. Kentucky this past year, look at the Kentucky message boards after Cal got fired. They want Bruce. They want Bruce. And then we got fans that seemingly are like, oh, it's, it's you know, oh, we got to expect championships, so we're not good enough. This, this isn't good enough because we don't know basketball. That's what you that that that's kind of what I what, what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people, and then on top of it all, all off, you know, Auburn as a whole, uh, I, I think Auburn basketball fans as a whole, it makes this a hell of a lot worse when you see Alabama in the Sweet 16 for the third year in a row. And you're like, hey, what the what the heck? If Alabama, I think if honestly, I think if Alabama wasn't in the Sweet 16, not that many people would care, <laughs> unfortunately. But that is a huge aspect of being an Auburn fan. That is a huge aspect of being an Auburn fan. So where are we as a program? We are a tournament team, okay? We've done it for five years in a row. We made one Final Four. We've had a couple of wins in the tournament. And then we've gotten knocked out uh, in the first round uh, one time, okay? So you've gotten knocked out in the first round one time. That can't happen, especially as a four seed. And you know who else knows that can't happen? Bruce Pearl. You think you you think like you've thought of something he hasn't thought of? You think Bruce is just okay with with like with not uh, you know? You think Bruce is just okay with what happened at Yale? Like you think you've thought of something that he hasn't? That's like that blows my mind. Like if if Auburn were to go out and hire, if we said Bruce retires today, and I said I'll tell you what, I got a guy, and I'm gonna guarantee you, I'm gonna guarantee you a Final Four, I'm gonna guarantee you a tournament uh, appearance in five years in a row. I'm going to guarantee you two tournament wins. I'm going to guarantee uh, two SEC tournament wins, and I'm going to guarantee you two uh, regular season titles in five years. Would you take him? You absolutely would. You absolutely would. And you know who else would? Every other team in the country that's going through a coaching change. Now, you can't continue to lose in the first round. There is no one that you can find that says it's okay that what happened uh, against Yale is okay. 
You cannot point me to somebody that says that's totally excusable. I get it. It's okay. We're going to slide it under the rug. That person doesn't exist. So I don't know why we have this, this huge, I don't understand why we have this huge outcry of like argument against people that don't exist. Those people don't exist. Okay. And if they do, they're so few that they don't matter. Those people do not exist. So when you're talking about Auburn should expect more and blah, 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 you're talking to no one. You are, it's an argument to no one. It's an argument to absolutely nobody. We all want to be better. We all want to accept winning. We, we want more winning. Okay. You're not talking to anybody else. You're not, you're not arguing with anybody that's going to come back with you and say, no, we're good. We're just, we're good where we are. That's that, that doesn't those people don't people don't exist. You're talking to the air. And, and you're getting people fired up. And, and then they're talking now they're talking to the air. It doesn't I, again, it just it doesn't make any sense. And, it, and I think a lot of it comes from we don't really know what good basketball is uh, and what to expect because we've been so poor for so long. I mean, Tennessee, when he when Bruce was at Tennessee, he made two sweet two sweet 16s. In, a, in an elite eight, and they would have, and they lo, still love him there. He's like a he's like a legend. Now he it was a, is an Auburn esque scenario, not as worse, where he did revive a program. But still, the, the this idea that it's got to be championship or bust is is not reality for really anyone. It's a huge goal and an aspiration and something that you strive for. But if we get to the point where we're looking for a a, a basketball coach that's that's it's, it's either going to be a national championship or bust, we'll shut down the program. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because it's not going to happen for anyone. Yeah, you're you're going to have some, there there are a few schools, especially you know there are a few schools that if you look over the past twenty years that that have repeated. You know, you got your Dukes, you got your Kansases, things of that nature. But as this portal thing's heating up and in the parity, you're seeing a lot more upsets in the tournament. You're seeing a lot more, you know, low seeds go far. I mean, San Diego State was a played for the national championship last year. I think it's like a four or five seed. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I know they were. I know they were not a. You know, I, I don't believe they were one of the top seeds last year. Uh, and you're going to continue to see that. So Auburn is at a Auburn is a tournament team every single year. And that is somewhere that we have honestly. I don't know that there's ever been a five or six year stretch where that's been the case. So Auburn's a tournament team now. Now you got to get to a second weekend team, and I can assure you, Bruce is doing everything he can to get Auburn there. You haven't come up with something that he hasn't already thought about. So I think we 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 need to sort of look around and understand. Okay. Why are coaches? Why are programs that are that have more story tradition trying to hire Bruce? Uh, and we're talking about we're unsatisfied. Let, let let's think about let's let's think about the perspective there. Okay, let's see what happens with this apparel thing. You know, does does Auburn make a switch away from you know Under Armour? Who knows? You know, if 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 you look up and you can get one of the you know the more elite, you know, you know I'm just gonna say if you can look up and get a Nike or or a, Jordan or Jordan brand or heck even Adidas that are more basketball friendly. What could happen if you if you finally get this player only facility thing figured out? Whether you build a whole new facility or you just repurpose Neville to be a basketball only facility, you know where where do you go from there? This is all about building a program, and we have built this program to the point where we are a tournament team. And you got to, you do have to take the next step. There is nothing excusable about this this past weekend. It was awful. It was embarrassing. It is what it is. You move on. It, this team is still good enough. This team is still good enough to to make a run uh, in March. You just didn't get it done when you had to get it done. It's freaky things happen in the tournament. So again. I think a lot of our perspective comes from looking at Alabama's success in football. I really do. I think, and, and we're just not big basketball folks. We, we we think we are. We act like we are on Twitter and things like that. But in reality, we're not really a true basketball school yet. We're still learning how to do that, and that's part of the process as well. Uh, and, and learning how to how how to balance 
what where the value is. That that that's tough as well. That's tough as well. Ultimately, the goal is to win the national championship. I would never say anything different. But considering that if that's the standard of pass or fail, we are going to be a sorely disappointed school, um, especially in basketball, always, along with a ton of other schools, uh, including, you know, your rivals that, that, that haven't gone as far as you have in the tournament, which doesn't matter anymore. That was in 2019. It, if, you, if you use that as a trump card, that's old. Move past it. We're beyond that. We're a tournament team now. Let's get to the next weekend. And, and I'm anxious to see what Bruce does in this offseason to kind of get you there. So, look, I'm going to put a bow on basketball for the year. We'll talk about if we have some portal additions, if we have this, that, and the other. We'll talk about that. But, look, the season's over. I think it was a fun season. It was a great season. You ha- you added a- you get to hang some banners, which is not something that Auburn gets to say very often. Uh, you get to wear some rings from your, from your SEC tournament. You beat the absolute – you know, you know what out of 20 plus teams and you had a lot of fun doing it. And and and, and the uh, Neville Arena is still one of the greatest atmospheres. So there's really nothing that happened that makes you I, I, I would there would, should really be nothing that happened that makes you want to change any of that. Uh, you just got to get better in March. And I think if that comes from your roster, that comes from upgrading positions, being willing to do it, being willing to make some tough calls in this portal area that, hey, look. We're going to have to move on, or you know, we got to bring in somebody better over you, and you're going to your your minutes are going to drop. Like though that it's cutthroat now, but you know what? It's cutthroat on both sides because a kid can come in and and, and take an NIL check uh, in the spring and, and leave in the summer. Now uh, we've seen that happen in football, and it can happen in basketball just as easy. So again, I don't really understand where this uh, who these people are that are okay with losing. I don't think they exist, and I think it was just a complete made-up thing that we're like – there's just this battle that needs to be waged to, for the honor of Auburn fans that we have to be – you know, we have to demand change. That And we're already – I mean, again, we just – we just uh, we had a guy that we uh, tried to stage a coup on in football. Uh, and then you had – then the next coach you came in, you kind of had the whole scenario where you – trashed his reputation and stuff to get rid of him. So I don't think we, we're not willing to do what we have to do in football. We're clearly willing to do what we have to do in football. And then you go out and you hire Bruce Pearl, who's completely turned the program around, and you're to the point now where you're upset after a first-round exit. I clearly don't think there's a lot of people that think we don't have to get it done in football, I mean in basketball. And then you don't watch but if, if you think there's an issue with baseball and, and, and making it to the World Series and losing in the World Series, you just don't watch baseball. You're not a baseball guy either. You're just a football guy and you're translating your football desires onto the other sports. So we're fine in baseball. We've had a rough start against two of the best teams in the country. Uh, and I think you're going to see it turn around just like it did last year. You had a rough start last year and you got it figured out. You just got to get better in the postseason. And you're not telling the coaches anything they don't already know. <laughs> you're not you this is no big revelation. So look, again, I get I'm getting a little sidebar, putting a putting a bow on basketball, great season, a lot of fun. Got to get better uh in the tournament and I think Bruce is going to do the things in the off season to make that happen. So again, I really appreciate you guys listening. Follow me on Twitter the underscore charlie underscore 5 comment if you disagree with me. Let's fight about it in the comments. Let me know about it. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that that are offended that uh, of some of the things that I said about the Auburn fan base. And, you know, it's just my opinion. I think there's a lot of facts that back it up. And uh, we'll just, you know, but we can talk it out. We can talk it out. Follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe, get in the comments. We'll have a lot of fun. This is episode 28 of the Top Button Podcast. We'll be back Thursday. Stay buttoned. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.